Pink's um, first album. Um, yeah, can't say I think can't take me home. Um, because I had met Pink, like I didn't sign Pink. She she was signed. Um, a friend of ours who worked at the company, Karen Daly, um, signed her, and she signed her in a group called Choice. And like I remember Karen listening to the demo, thinking, "Oh, that sounds good. What is it?" And she said it was dope, but it was these white girls. And I remember it because it said, "But it was but they're white." And I'm like, "Sound good." And you know, never thought nothing. I was like, "You should tell L.A." She brought him down. L.A. signed it. But in that meeting, I remember there was a moment where, like, because I wasn't, you know, maybe 24, 25 or something at the time. And I just was, you know, just my own thing. And I remember locking eyes with Alicia and, and it felt like she had made it a point to turn me into a fan. And I was like, okay, well, let's see. Like, And, and what I remember was, oh, this energy I recognized. And in that we grew to be friends and that ended up being i ended up being on her a and r over time because i started noticing that she wasn't just the group she was deeper she was a, you know she she felt like she came from the same elements that me and my friends came from and you know and that project opened me up to to probably understand that it wasn't like black music translates a lot of ways like and and sometimes it lands on people who understand it for a reason and you and, and, and understanding that you can push the agenda farther it made me understand that like oh this is for a reason this this connection is happening for a reason like it pushed me out of just being the hip-hop guy or just the r&b guy it, it put me into a, a space where i did pop music but it was still the same to me it just had a different um veneer i guess I met with Jeezy the day he did his deal at at Def Jam, and he came in and he played me music. I loved it. I remember thinking I was at Sony at the time, and I was, and I remember him, you know, them telling me how they were moving and everything. And I was like, man, I love this shit, but I can't sign it here, like because it's going to fuck up what you're doing, and. I don't want you to have to explain everything that you're doing to somebody so that you can do it when you're doing it already. I was like, you, and he was like, well, yeah, I'm about to go, I'm about to go meet with um, him and Jazzy, I think. Him, they were like, I'm about to go meet with um, Shake over at the Def Jam. I was like, that's probably where you need to be, though. <laughs> and, you know, but I don't, I don't, I don't regret not signing it, but because the relationship as friends, we, we like, we're good, we're good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I've ever looked back to think that if if we would have done this, this would be different. I think that if if I'd have signed Jeezy at at um, at Columbia, he he might have been a little flip. You know, just based on not talent wise, but I'm saying in the sense that the situations like Lil Flip was huge before he got there. He he was the most you know successful independent artist at the time. And then came into a system where he had to explain how to be independent, and and I don't think that that's that's fair. I think that our jobs as and ours isn't just to sign and acquire a bunch of people and say, "Yo, I signed this person." It's about making sure that what you do is done with the intent of being successful for both people. Listen to Ti and just just be his partner. That would have been that that may be the only one that I'm like like. I would like when when I was leaving Arista and and we were trying to figure out the next move. He was like, "Why don't we just do this shit together?" And I was like, "Man, I don't know if I know enough yet." And that like I would have, I probably would have. The only advice I would give myself is trust yourself, especially when people you trust trust you. <laughs> I would probably say during the Yellow Wolf um, touring spaces um, because we. You know, again, coming from a purely hip hop touring space, um, I wasn't. I was used to you know rap tours, and we did the the Warp tour for Yellow Wolf, and that was the thing that probably stripped me of caring about the flex because I was out on the road with these these bands who <laughs> were wearing the same clothes for weeks at a time, and but they were they were making more money, they were doing the job they enjoyed doing, and they weren't 
necessarily trying to out they they were trying to outperform each other but they weren't trying to outshine each other like all the competition was was purely on that stage and it gave me a, um a point of view that i didn't have because i was used to you know again i i was used to packing four or five duffel bags for for a month if we're going on tour that means how, how many pairs of sneakers do i need for a month you know it's like you start thinking all this shit, right but what you stop necessarily paying attention to in that moment is okay what am i going to do when i'm on that stage what is that stage what i need on that stage and watching yellow wolf who's one of the best performers i've to this day i've ever seen live like him he doesn't have the records that DMX has, but he has the energy and, and that kind of presence, right? And, you know, just saying that it doesn't require, like, to, to, to do the basic job, you have to be dope. And all the other shit is bells and whistles for the show after you're dope. But if you start out with the with all the jewelry, all the, the cards, all the pyro, all everything first, the day that you just need to go show up and be dope, you're going to now look, you're not going to be able to handle it because you need all these crutches. Yeah. What happened to the toaster? I thought you popped up everywhere you you end up. <laughs> I didn't know Usher walked in the room. Like, but yeah, it's like that kind of shit. 